Well, she's protecting something or someone. Okay, yeah, obvi. But what? I don't know yet. I'm getting through to her though. We have to go to the Hathorn house tonight. Tonight? Like in the dark? Yeah. Do you have flashlights? You do remember what I told you about that place, right? You know what? Better idea. I'll go. You stay here and see if maybe May feels like talking to you. Be careful out there, Drew. There's no such thing as ghosts, Deirdre. I'll be fine. No, not ghosts. People swear there's something in that house. Too many people believe it to not be true. Could be a wild animal or a toxic waste dump, I don't know. Just keep your guard up, okay? Mm, wow, that was really sweet. Yeah, all right, let's not hug or anything. You should check in with Lauren Holt. She still lives up there. Take the keys for my car. It's way too far of a walk all the way there. And remember, things happen after midnight in Salem. <sighs> Be careful. Not at all. Frank! Nancy, you sound... excited. Yeah, well, guess where I am right now. I, uh, wouldn't even begin to. Salem, Massachusetts. Joe, how the heck did you guys know? We read about the Hathorn house in the Globe. Suspected arson. Your name was mentioned. Not as a suspect, obviously. <laughs> Tegan Perry mentioned she had hired you to investigate. Hired? Huh. That's news to me. I came here as a favor for Deirdre. Deirdre Shannon? Wow. That's surprising. Yeah. It's a strange case all around. So, what can I help you guys with? Well, we're working this case and a few legal questions have arisen. My father would probably be more helpful than me, guys. Yeah. Well, we'd prefer to call you because of... You know, history. What my brother is trying to say is that there are some similarities to an old case we worked on. Sure. If you want to send me your notes, I can look them over for you. Great. That's great. Salem's pretty close to Boston. If you guys have the time, you should come up here and check it out while I'm in town. Really? Yeah. It would be good to catch up. Eh, I don't know, Nancy. With our special detective powers, we might be mistaken for witches. Heard they don't fare well up there. Are you kidding me? They love you guys. Did you know that Salem is the only police force that has a witch as an official emblem? Hmm, I don't think that's true. I'll bet you on it. Okay, you're on. I'll take payment when we arrive in Salem. Maybe in a week or so. A week? Hopefully I won't be here then. But if you can make it up earlier, great. Good talking to you, Nance. Yeah, same to you two. Bye. <laughs> Interesting.
What are you doing here? Are you Lauren Holt? You're trespassing. This is private property. I'm giving you one chance to explain yourself. I need to speak with Lauren Holt. So? What? Well, I wanted to talk to her about Francis Tuttle. Why? Did you know her or something? No, but I want to. She was a great woman. I believe it. She was the former owner of this place, right? Yeah. You can come in. Hi. My name is Nancy Drew. Lauren Holt. But you knew that. T? Please. You've lived here a while? Since I was 11. Ever since Francis... Sorry. Still hurts. She was very special to me. So... You're here because why again? I'm investigating the fire. For whom, exactly? A cousin of the Perrys. It seems like everyone thinks she did it, but there's no evidence. The Perrys are complicated. Do you think May did it? Maybe. I don't know. Used to feel sorry for her, but I don't know what she's capable of now. Or Tegan. Or both of them. The Perrys look out for themselves, and no one else. Always have. Sorry. I've just been under a lot of stress lately. I don't mean to sound like that. Anyway, what do you want to know? Is Luminous Infusions your shop? Yes. What do you do there? Just curious. It's a tea room and modern apothecary. You know, before there was a pharmacist, the town relied on an herbalist to provide medicines for headaches and sickness and energy and stuff like that. Interesting. Did Francis Tuttle teach you this? No. I taught myself. Oh, cool. What can you tell me about the history of the Hathorne House? Built by Judge John Hathorne in 1695, the man flat out stole the land from the people he sentenced to death. Property has changed hands many times over the years, with Francis Tuttle being the most recent owner. I really do appreciate you talking to me. It's hard. I, I want... Look, I don't really know who set fire to the house, but I know that I want to stay here. It means something to me. It's the only home I've ever had. What were you doing two nights ago? Two nights ago? Why? The house was burned a week ago. Different case. Might be related. I was in my shop, like I was every night. Anyone see you? Tourists. No one who is still in town, but I have sales receipts to prove it. You come by Luminous Infusions, and I'll show you. Have you looked for the will? Of course, but I can't find it. Believe me, I've tried to find it, and now the judge has given me days to deliver or the town will take control. I don't have a copy, but I know one exists. Francis told me all the time that the Hathorne House and its grounds would be mine if something ever happened to her. She knew that I would take care of this place better than anyone else. What happens to you? I won't be here anymore. But I have representation, a professional lawyer. Her name's Alicia Cole. She's helping me out. So, I saw the ghost out in the cemetery. The Scarecrow? Yeah. I've heard there were ghosts out here, but all I saw was that. Do you believe in ghosts? <sighs> I've seen a lot of weird things. So far, I've yet to find one without a rational explanation. Then there's nothing to talk about. But why does everyone think there are ghosts out here? A town this old is bound to have some unbelievable stories. So you've seen one? You don't live here. You wouldn't understand. So you have. I'm getting a little tired. I think we've talked enough, don't you? Of course. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. What the? Whoever is doing this, you're not frightening me away. Not possible. That's not possible. Curse not. Drew! 
What's going on? You weren't answering your phone. What's wrong? I saw it. Her. I guess it could have been a him, too. It was too confusing to really make out. What are you talking about? The ghost, Deirdre. The ghost it had. The one you were talking about. I saw it. Wow. Never thought you'd try to pull a joke like this. I underestimated you. This is a really good performance. Very un-Nancy Drew-like. It's not a joke. Deirdre, I saw her. Didn't you want me to see it? Didn't you want me to look into it? Well, yeah, but I didn't think for a second that you would. I guess I thought you'd go up there and find... smoke and mirrors or whatever it is you do. You're saying... it's real? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not used to being so freaked out. Wait, you didn't leave my car out there, did you? What? No, no. Calm down enough to drive back. It's outside. Good. I could get you more chowder. Don't think it'll help. I need answers. Okay, so let's go through it. I do find work strange. I don't know how to explain it, but I saw something. I don't know what to tell you, Drew. It's as weird as Moonchunk cheese ice cream and sandals with socks. But my instinct is... That the two are related. The fire and the ghosts. Right. You're not buying Olivia's story that some coven of witches came here to unleash ghosts to take revenge by burning it down, though. Right? Right, I think. It's unlikely anyway. You really think what you saw was real? It's worse than that. I think in order to know, I need to see it again. And you need to come with me. Tomorrow. Okay. And then we can plan road trips to find Bigfoot and aliens and the Loch Ness Monster. Hey, that's fun to me. Found out something interesting before it Holt. Did you know that Francis Tuttle had a will? Judge Danforth never mentioned that. Because they can't find it? They assume it doesn't exist. So, if it does exist, Lauren would get the estate. Yeah. Oh, that lawyer, Alicia Cole, represents her. How's that working out for her? There doesn't seem to be much progress made. Yeah, well, without a will, what can she really do? It's been a long day. I think I'm just gonna call it a night. You do look kinda... Well, maybe don't video chat with the boyfriend. At least not until you get the twigs out of your hair. <laughs> I appreciate your concern. Hey. What? You want that chowder now? The offer expired. I was going to say, we make a pretty good team. See? That's proof right there. You are definitely hallucinating. <sighs> There's always an explanation. Gotta remember that. What is the town of Greenwich, New York? Sorry? They have a witch on their emblem. We won! Really? Sending you a pic. When can we expect payment? <laughs> That's a fire department logo. I said police. Public safety. It's all the same. A technicality. <sighs> There's something I have to get off my chest. I saw a ghost. <laughs> Sorry, what? This case. I've never seen anything like it. It felt real. I can't explain it. What is it? What's wrong? Uh, hold on. Say no more. It just so happens that ghost hunting is our specialty. Wait, what? We're not passing on a chance like this. Be there before you know it. <laughs> Only if you really want to. Talk to you later. Good morning, sunshine. What time is it? It's early. Hurry up, get dressed, and meet me downstairs. I have something to cheer you up. Huh. Thank you.
Oh my, oh my, oh my, not good, not good, not good! <coughs> oh, what are you guys doing in here? They're trying their best to unimpress me. Mission accomplished. Nancy! Hi! Joe was just, uh, making an effort. Oh, that's what that smell is. I tried showing him the ropes, but he wants to prove he can do it without my help. Tegan set out the ingredients for Johnny Cakes before she had to run, but I gotta admit, it's been a while since I last whipped something up. Successfully. Oh, I love Johnny Cakes. I can help. Of course you can. All right, Hardy, step down before we have another fire on our hands. All right, let's see. Step one, one cup of sugar. One cup of sugar, two tablespoons of sugar. This can't be right. I told you I couldn't keep up with her, so I improvised. I'm 100% certain about the amounts, though. Let's approach this sensibly. What do we need? One cup of flour. I think you've got it. One cup of cornmeal. Looks right to me. One spoon of sugar. I think you've got it. One spoon of sugar. Looks right to me. One teaspoon of salt. Looks right to me. One spoon of baking powder. We're getting there. That looks great. Let's tackle the next step. All right. Second step. We have to fill the bowl until the weight is just right. Quick heads up. This is about where things started to go south last time. Hey! Let's just trust that Nancy knows what she's doing. That looks great. Let's tackle the next step. Finally, my favorite part. I thought your favorite part was eating. My next favorite part. Dear goodness. Joe, could you help me pour while I flip? Sure thing. Here comes some more. This is going great, I think. This is going great, I think. All done. They look super tasty. Let's. Interesting. This one looks fun. Who deserves a Johnny cake? Almost done. Almost done. These are for May. Hope they make her happy.
Hmm. I'll do this one. More Johnny Cakes coming up. Almost done. I need to make Deirdre axe tough sometimes, but who doesn't get happy from eating homemade pancakes? Interesting. I'll do this one. Who deserves a Johnny cake? Only a few more. Spooky. Something for Lauren. With everything that's going on, maybe these can take her mind off things. Hmm. I'll do this one. Who deserves a Johnny cake? Almost done. This came out great. These are just what I imagine Olivia would like. So cute. These are just what I imagine Olivia would like. Let's see. I'll do this one. More Johnny Cakes coming up. I'm sure Tegan will love these. Interesting. Let's begin. More Johnny Cakes coming up. make more like these sometime. These are for Joe. On second thought, I guess he would eat any of them. Let's see. 
This one looks fun. Time for some cooking. Almost done. This came out great. I think Frank would like these. Ooh, these smell delicious. Great job, Nancy. These look amazing. Okay, May. These are the Hardy brothers, Frank and Joe. We are very interested in your case. Uh-huh. They're good friends of mine. They're going to help us with the investigation. The more people we have working on this, the better chance we have of solving the case. Cool. Joe, you need to learn how to cook. Maybe let Frank teach you. Otherwise, how are you going to impress anyone? Solving crimes impresses people. So does committing them. What? It's true. Not saying I'm impressed by that. Just stating a fact. I prefer someone who possesses a deep intellectual appreciation and table manners. You want to be impressed? We should finally show her our business plan for our new business. What? It's very businessy. What? What is it? Well, Joe and I have been talking recently about making things a bit more official. Since we're always called to solve crimes, we thought that maybe we should start getting paid for it. We're starting our very own detective agency. License, insurance, the whole thing. And... And we want to know if you'd be interested in being a partner. A partner? Hey, table that. All right, Drew. Why not update everyone on where we're at? So, I guess you're wondering about the... Thing I mentioned. Yes, sounds super exciting. I already told them about the whole sighting. Yeah, I can't explain it yet. Even with the most modern scientific techniques available, there are many phenomena that we still cannot explain. I believe what you saw was real. What? What? Sure, some sort of combination of gaseous blow off and light refraction. No, supernatural. A ghost, a real ghost, with thoughts and memory and agency. I'm not so sure. I just built some new equipment that I'd love to try out. I'm sure it's nothing, but we'll go to the cemetery today and investigate anyway. Maybe we can add ghost hunting to our detective services. <laughs> Kidding. One thing I'd like to do today is check the town archives. If it's all the same to you, I'd prefer to handle this. You were going to look into the history of ownership of the Hathorn House, right? Yeah, sure. We can go together. Uh, no. It's better if I handle this solo. I'm a whiz with microfish. Don't ask me why. Sounds like a story. And I'm not going to tell it to you, okay? So, Nancy, what do you think we should focus on for the investigation? Judge Danforth mentioned that he was the victim of a burglary. What was stolen? We don't know. The judge was working with Tegan on developing a case for the Accused Witches Organization. The what? The descendants of the Accused Witches of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials. They're staking a claim to the Hathorne Estate due to unjust dispossession and execution of their ancestors. It's one of the reasons I searched for the Book of Apologies in Austria as it contains a record of wronged families. But someone swiped it, and right under my nose. And around the time of the arson, there was a burglary at the judge's office. Too coincidental not to be connected. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'd like to review the crime scene at the courthouse for any clues. The judge might not let you do that. He didn't sound very forthcoming. True. 
but maybe my father can convince him. They're old friends. I can give him a call. All right. What else? The arson that happened last week. And we haven't had the chance to collect any alibis yet. We need to ask everyone we've met where they were on the night of the arson. Corroborating their answers with whomever they were with will help bring into focus who is and isn't a suspect. We need to figure out how the theft from Mosem Castle is connected to this case. Theft of what? The Book of Apologies. My dad asked me to retrieve it from Mosam Castle in Austria as a favor for Judge Danforth, who works here in Salem. It details all the victims of the witch trials, some of which are still unknown to this day. However, this book was stolen as well, three days ago, when Nancy was there. Why was this book all the way in Austria? Great question. The resident historian told me the judge who wrote the book willed all his belongings to be preserved by whichever museum would have them at the time. That must be how it ended up in an Austrian castle for safekeeping. Well, that certainly didn't stop the thief, whoever it is. I can ask around about alibis during this time period as well. See if anyone in town can't be accounted for. Might point us in the right direction. I have something to add. Whoever is responsible for this crime is going to great lengths to cover it up. We don't know if these people are dangerous. Remember that. And be careful.